What's up, Rito? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and you're getting a little behind the scenes on how we create our amazing TikToks and <laughs> reels. I'm just kidding. I don't make TikToks. I only make YouTube shorts now. Oh, you know, among my other videos, but Shaylee, she's got a cool idea using this badass exhaust, the Cobra exhaust for her bike. If you ever see a cool reel, if I ever do a cool TikTok or a cool, oh, I don't really make TikToks anymore. Actually, you know what? Screw TikTok, dude. I'm over it, man. Yeah, I don't TikTok. I only post Instagram uh, reels, but I always say TikTok. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm posting a TikTok. Like, yeah, because it's short. Actually, but it's a YouTube short, but it's like saying Band-Aid instead of adhesive strip. Yeah, you know? I, I'm just like over the TikTok thing, man. No, I'm over TikTok. I don't want to do it anymore. And uh, not to be like Mr. Conspiracy Theorist or anything like that. Yo, I watch a whole podcast on TikTok's terms of service. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, Joe Rogan. But Joe Rogan really went through the terms of service on that. And it's really scary what they're allowed to do if that app is installed on your phone. So I think we're pretty much officially done with TikTok. <laughs> But, uh, but we're still making YouTube shorts along with our regular content. It's not impacting any of our regular long form content because that's the stuff we like to make, but we've been having fun doing this. I also like to make shorts a lot. Yeah. I have so much fun making them. Yeah, they're actually a lot of fun to make. And again, they're like the Wild West on YouTube right now. So if you're a smaller creator and you're trying to gain subscribers, I'm going to tell you right now, start making shorts. Anyway, I had to do a quick polish on this for YouTube. <laughs> Good to have it polished anyway, you know? Sounds good. Oh, I said, God damn. Oh yeah, the gas ain't turned on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said. What you said? I said. <laughs> I said, God damn, that sounds good. Leaving Shay at it in the garage for a little while while I go deliver all the packages that you guys ordered off of brapstar.com today because I couldn't deliver them yesterday. The USPS, my arch nemeses, my number one rivals, the Fantastic Four to my Doctor Doom decided they would be closed yesterday. Mm. Well, if the USPS has thought they've heard the last of Shade Tree Surgeon, think again. Even today, USPS thought they had vanished vanquished me. They thought they'd seen the last of this fat, sweaty man and his effeminate little scooter. Ha 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 ha! I laugh into the night as I go back the very same day. USPS thought they could defeat me? Ha <laughs> ha not I, the masked midnight misogynist. I shall always live to strike again. Manifest, freaking manifest this. I can swear to God, the only thing I'm manifesting is a maniacal laugh as I scoot on into the night. <laughs> Shade tree surgeon strikes again. <laughs> USPS, you thought you were free from me. Think again. As long as Shade tree surgeon is drawing air, as long as there's but a single brap star weirdo with love in his heart out there in the world, I shall be a thorn in the side of USPS forevermore. All right, well, that's enough terrorizing the USPS for one day. Let's go see what's cracking at the ride factory. I gotta come up here and uh, get some fluids for Shaylee's new shovel head. And that's a cool looking airhead. Oh, I like that. Yo, what's up, Shelby? I hear Rocket 3. Rocket 3 sounds back there. Rocket 3 with janky exhaust. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, whenever you look in the showroom at the Ride Factory, you get reminded that they work on everything because we have Ducati, Suzuki TL1000, BSA, Harley Davidson, Triumph. Uh, literally everything gets written. Oh, and another Ducati. Wow, you guys are freaking full of Ducatis right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know, man. It the ride factor with all these Harleys outside, two Ducatis seems like a lot. Anyway, like I always say, you gotta support your local motorcycle shop. If it's the ride factory, awesome. Make sure you come up here and support these guys when you're buying parts, when you're getting bolts, your oil and stuff like that. It's so important because if you don't support your local motorcycle shop, guess what? They ain't gonna be around for very long. And by the way, 
one of the only places left in Tampa, or if not, I guess actually the only place left in Tampa that you can still walk in and get shovel head parts. That is one hell of a front fairing on that thing. Hannigan's Sport Touring Fairing. That is freaking wild. Definitely like super Mad Max looking, I dig it. Crazy how many companies used to make stuff like this back in the day. All right, say goodbye to the boys at the Ride Factory. Time to head back home because Cami Bay is there waiting for me. And she would very much like her CBR back. We started working on it, but uh, abandoned it for a little while because, I don't know, man, Christmas happened. She had to go see family. I was hanging out and doing my thing and you know, getting food poisoning, so that wasn't super great. But anyway, we're back. It's after the holidays. And as much as I dislike the CBR, it's time to see that thing run again. All right, back in the garage, Jay shut. Shovel head, Shay shovel head, that's gonna be hard to say. Is waiting, and right now, Cami Bay is back, baby. Back from Christmas vacation, and it's time to go to work. I'm just kidding. Well, it's good work because it's your bike. Fun work. Yeah, this is fun work. Working on your own stuff is always more fun. All right, let's get this sucker back in action. It is another day, and I've already gotten on the neighbor's shit list by starting up the shovel head and uh, letting it run a little while so we can change the oil in it. Say, Lisey's gonna change the oil in it, and I'm going to observe her change the oil in it. Man, somebody left a comment in one of Shay Lisey's videos going like, oh my God, Josh just like tells you what to do and doesn't let you talk and all this. It's really this long, like like multi-paragraph diatribe about how I'm like controlling her channel or something like that. And I was just like, dude, <laughs> come meet us before you like start this conspiracy theory about how I'm somehow manipulating and Shaylisi into these weird situations for my own, own amusement. Why don't you go ahead and meet us in person first? Because we're not hard to find, man. Come to one of the campouts. We're not hard people to find. If you want to actually make up, yeah, you make. If you want to still want to think that after you meet us and shake my hand and meet Shaylisi, then by all means, think it. But until then, come on, dude. Anyway, it's shoveling time. Warmed up a little bit so the oil's all around, and uh, I don't know if it needs an oil change. Oil doesn't look bad in it, but when it comes to a bike like this, you want to know what's in it. And we don't know what's in it right now. Let's dog it. <laughs> Let's go. We're about to do a little test ride on the shovel now that's got all fresh fluids. Jenna's hanging out today. Yeah. It's been a while since you've been on the channel. Or maybe you have been. I never, I forget like when people are because I see my friends in real time and it's not always in videos. <laughs> <laughs> so I, know, I always forget like when the last time you guys saw them was. But <laughs> we're all uh, we're all heading up to Burt's Barracuda for bike night here in a little bit. I'm going to be riding this, not the shovel head because the shovel head is less than legal, which this might be as well. I just think it's really cool that the Dyna replaced the FXR, sort of, they overlap, but it replaced the FXR because people said the FXR looked too Japanese and when they made the Dyna, they actually made it to look like a shovel head. That was a whole thing as they go like, okay, the FXR does not look uh, traditional enough for people. So they made the Dyna. It's just kind of, kind of a neat little bit of Harley history there and how the Dyna got made and how it came about. Now this one has a custom oil tank and a couple other custom pieces. So you can't really see as much similarity, but that is what they were doing. They just said, hey, that was the first modern classic we'll call it. Uh, Harley did it before anybody else. The first modern classic was the Dyna and they wanted to look just like an FXE. And when you see two stock one side by side, they really look identical. All right, what do you guys give my odds? Think I can be a hero? First kick? First kick? Why not, dude? All the, all the fuel did leak out of the float bowl, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the fuel off because it, it does leak out, man. You fill that float bowl up, it's on the ground. Well, if I can, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to kick it. Well, okay. Easier said than done sometimes. Everyone was giving me a hard time telling Shay to put her knee on the seat. It's either you put your knee on the seat or you stand on the swing arm. That's how you kickstart these bikes. Everyone was telling Shay to straddle it like this. I'm like, you think that with one leg, that Shay Lisi weighing 98 pounds is gonna be able to start this? I can stand on this thing at TDC sometimes and it doesn't completely go down. Well, that was just a primer, man. That was just a primer. Yeah, that's a prime kick. Second prime kick. You always got to have two. <laughs> two prime. Everybody know. Everybody knows that shit, dude. Okay, that was my first real kick. This one for sure. <laughs> All right, this one for sure. I can feel it. It's missing a couple teeth on the starter or on the uh, kicker. Or is it missing all of them now? I would not sweat it, dude. It was on its way out. The kicker is fucked up. Well, luckily, this one comes with a cheat code.
Oh well, you see, there ain't no shame in it. <laughs> there ain't no shame in it because I said so, you know? Oh, it's pretty wild. What a good deal Shay Lisi got on this bike. I mean, you got a running, riding, stopping, shifting shovel head for 3,000 bucks. That's wild. Okay, stop, stop, as in, please stop. <laughs> I wouldn't say it stops the best, okay? You got a running, riding, stopping is a suggestion, shovel head, okay? As usual with these old bikes, the rear brake is like way better than the front brake. <laughs> that is a, that is a sound only an old shovel with drags can make. <laughs> Baby. Nothing quite sounds like a shovel, that's for damn sure. I would say that a twin cam is a very, very, very close second, if not first, man. I just love the way a twin cam sounds. Everything about the twin cam and the Dyna and everything like that was basically a return to their roots. That's why people loved them. The Dyna was really the direct successor to the FXE. This bike came out and people loved it, dude. This is the bike that, well, you know, the Evo saved Harley. You know, the, sometimes the shovel heads get a bad rap, but People remember them very, very fondly, that's for sure. And hey, man, I rode one across the country. How bad could they be? This thing runs like a freaking champ, dude. You can just ride it around like this. Now, she at least is going to make a chopper out of it, but this is a running, riding bike, man. I wouldn't feel bad riding this thing anywhere. Not a damn thing wrong with this bike. You gotta keep your eyes open. Everyone goes, how do you find the deals, Josh? How do you find the deals, Shade Tree? Ah, uh, you gotta keep your eyes open. And then uh, every once in a while, you also got to get lucky on top of it. And speaking of getting lucky, we're heading over to Bird's Barracuda because we are pulling uh, one person's lucky number. We're pulling the very first winner for somebody who's going to win an all expenses paid fishing trip. I'll fly your ass down here, ride motorcycles, raise hell, drink beer and have fun. Hopefully from somewhere up in the cold frozen north. We'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to fly you down here and you're going to learn what it's like to party with the Brap Star crew. Well, one of y'all is anyway. Do this thing for rips man i love this bike it's that chrome baby dude it's crazy jumping on this thing after riding around the shovel head because shovel head's got forward controls it's got similar bars similar risers like it really is just like this is kind of a modern iteration of that except you get on this thing and you're like holy crap dude this this thing moves compared to the shovel head man the shovel head feels like a goddamn moped compared to this fxr what are they fxdr fx uh <laughs> I don't know. Compared to this Dyna, that shovel head don't feel like it's moving at all. Uh, and then of course there's the rubber mounted compared to the rigid mounted shovel. Now the new counterbalancing has come a long way. The new rigid mounted soft tails, they barely feel like they're running when you drive them down the road. These twin cam rubber mounts, man, you know you're on a motorcycle when you ride one of these, but it doesn't rattle your teeth out like a shovel head does. Yeah, you ain't cruising easy on a shovel head at 70 miles an hour, that's for damn sure. I mean, it'll do it. It just is not the greatest feeling thing in the world, man. At that point, you're riding the Hitachi Glide. Rip for your pleasure. I really am blown away. I'm not just saying it for the video. Just jumping off that shovel head, the FXE, with that, it has a little bit of rake to it, onto this Wide Glide Dyna, man. It's so obviously inspired by that bike everything from the way you sit on it to the way it looks it stands the way it feels when you twist the throttle it's so obviously inspired by the fxe it just does everything way better i've never really been a dyna guy i've always loved my fxr more but the more time i spend on this bike the more i'm like okay guys all you dyna guys all right i get it yeah, I'm gonna miss this bike when it's gone. And yes, it is leaving. Much to my dismay, Diplomat is not keeping this thing for good. And I don't blame him, man. He's a family man. He can't afford to have five bikes outside. I'm a, I'm that a no kids income, baby. I ain't got no kids, so I got a couple extra motorcycles. My man Diplomat there, he's Dadplomat. Wait, that, that doesn't exactly roll off, roll off the tongue. Alex is a good dad and he takes care of his daughters. And I think this has been a really fun project for him, but he is getting rid of it. In fact, he's giving it away. I had kind of talked to him about it and he was asking uh, me what I thought he should do and he could have sold it for a lot. I mean, this is a special edition Dyna. The chrome on it's perfect. It runs perfectly. It's got low miles. Like these bikes, Dynas, they ain't getting any cheaper. <laughs> I never thought it'd come a day. Never thought it'd come a day when Dynas were going up in price. But right now, 
they going up in price. He could get a lot of money for this special edition bike, especially in the perfect shape that it's in. But I thought it'd be cooler if he did a giveaway, if he just gave the bike away. So if you want to enter into the giveaway for this motorcycle right here, you're going to go to Alex's store. He's going to be selling some limited edition, the Costome Way for this bike, this Dyna, out of time, they call it. Personally, uh, I prefer calling it the Saturday Night Special, but it is Diplomat's bike, so he gets to name it at a time. It is, but uh, every bike deserves a few good titles. So at a time, Saturday Night Special, the chromed out Dyna, Baby, this is finding a new home. And on top of all that, you better act fast because I know they're gonna go like that, baby. There's only 150 spots. It's not going live. You're not able to buy that sticker until this video comes out. So as you're hearing me talk about it, besides me uh, announcing it to my Patreon, because I'm gonna tell them about it first, this is the first time it's being publicly announced that one of 150 of those limited edition stickers are available and that's how you could be going home with this bike right here. And as always, you know how we do it. If you win this bike and you wanna fly down here to Florida and ride around with us, hey, you know what? I'll throw that one in on me. And you know why? Not because of my love for Diplomat, even though he's my boy, I love him very much. I do that just because I like to party with people. So whoever, whoever ends up getting this bike, I want you to fly down here and party with us. Before we ship this bike out to you, I want you to see what it's like to roll with the Brap Star crew around Tampa Bay. So grab one of those Costome Way stickers now, because once they're gone, they're gone. And at only 150 spots, they're gonna be gone fast. And I know that's kind of annoying for some people because they're like, man, I'd like more of a chance, more time to get it. But I don't know, man, it just seems like the fair way to do it. You don't want to just leave it unlimited because at the end of the day, this is just, it's just a Dyna. It's an awesome bike. And for, you know, for a hundred bucks, that's what the limited edition stickers cost. For a hundred bucks, someone's going to get given an absolutely amazing piece of machinery. You know, man, you, you can't be greedy on this stuff. One in 150, those ain't bad odds. And we definitely wanted to keep it like within the realm of realistic. Although I will say, man, <laughs> I'm going to be sad to see this ripper go. I really, really like this bike. And I'd buy a sticker myself, but the whole thing is, is I'd basically just be buying a sticker to buy the sticker because Diplomat knows if, he, if, I, if I get a sticker and all of a sudden my name gets pulled out of the hat, it's going right in the trash. I'm not actually getting the bike. I'm not allowed to win. That would look just too, a little too hinky. But you know, if you uh, if you live up north and uh, you get given this bike and you want a place to store it so you can come down here whenever you want and ride it. And, and in the meantime, I'll keep it warm for you. You know, I think we might be able to arrange something. <laughs> yeah. This ain't a shovel head. Ah, it'd also be hard for me to make up my mind which engine I think sounds better. Trust me, I'm a Evo till I die, but between a shovel head sound and a twin cam exhaust sound, like I don't even know, man. Those are really just like neck and neck for the best sound in Harley's ever made, in my opinion. All right, let's see what, what Burt's has cooking for us today. Well, actually, I know what Burt's has cooking for us today. Not only is it bike night, but we're about to do a live stream with Gunner, and uh, that's enough about this giveaway because that ain't happening yet as of today that's not until the future back to the future we're now in the past and today we're giving away a fishing trip so let's go pull a winner for that long and lean and every young man's dream you know that bike ain't bad either baby <laughs> early in the morning the early bird gets to squirm Brapstar orders going out. Let's go terrorize the USPS. All right, baby. Poking speed. Last night was fun, man. I hadn't done a live stream on my channel in quite some time. Huge ups to everybody who showed out and huge ups to everybody who made it happen and raised a lot of money for hurricane relief here in Florida. That's money that goes directly to people who need it. So good on you. And big congratulations to my man, Reese from Colorado. I was hoping, I really was hoping that somebody's name was gonna get picked who was like just snowed in somewhere. I don't know if Colorado is the coldest place in America, but I know it's pretty cold there and Florida's a whole hell of a lot nicer. So I'm excited to fly Reese down. He's going to come down this month. We're going to go on a deep sea fishing trip. We're going to ride motorcycles, terrorize USPS, drink beers at the Dirty Shame. It's going to be a good time. <sighs> That's right. Your arch nemesis returns USPS. 
just when you thought you were safe. You'll never be safe while Shade Tree Surgeon prowls the streets. Ha ha ha! I laughed into the night! <laughs> evil doers strike again. Not just the nighttime, evil's waking up early this year. He's back from the post office, back in the garage. I learned my lesson last week or earlier this week when I titled a video about my YZ465, a build that nobody's upset about. Like everybody's stoked about it. Me, most of all, man. I grew up watching the Dirt Bike Kid and the 27 speed two stroke in Terminator 2. I've always wanted a big bore two stroke, like the street hooligan bike. I learned my lesson, but because I titled the video like I was gonna title like I have in the past, like episode one, episode two. I'm not doing that because uh, the YouTube algorithm absolutely just hates that, I guess. And it's not that I'm that worried. I'm still gonna work on the bike. I'm just gonna stop titling the videos like that, which is kind of a bummer for people who wanna keep up with just that. But eventually later on, once the bike's completely done and once all the videos are out, then I'll probably retitle them as episode one, two, three, so people can kind of follow the build or maybe I'll just uh, save all the footage from it and then when it's done, do a big build one. But it's just kind of a bummer because I know people do wanna see it, but YouTube just, <laughs> I mean, here's the sad truth about YouTube and the way it promotes stuff. If it doesn't say Harley Davidson in the thumbnail, it's really hard to get a video promoted these days. It just is what it is, baby. We're gonna roll with the punches, but we're still working on it. It's still happening. Just the video titles is probably gonna be the fact that I rode around this $3,000 shovel head for the very first time. Before we even start on my fun project, and not that it isn't fun, I always like turning wrenches on bikes, twirling the wrenchies, spinning the old wrencheroonies. It is always actually fun for me. You guys know that Jay's Suzuki Savage is actually sold. It's already been bought. He's coming in a few days to pick it up, but I got the brake pads for it. So I'm still going to throw those on there because I want him to take home a bike that's just like ready to go. And it's actually, it's not for him. It's for his daughter. Now, in case she's watching, I don't want to spoil this. So I'm not saying who it is, but yeah, I want to, I want to make sure it's good because it's going to bring more family into the world of motorcycles. And I really like that. Just to be absolutely sure that these don't make any more noise. I'm gonna go ahead, even though they're new pads, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit them with this disc brake quiet. While that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this rotor apart. Thanks Shelby every day for turning me on to this Milwaukee Power Ratchet. It really makes life a lot easier. And while it is uh, certainly tempting to use the Power Ratchet for everything, there are just some things you really don't want to use it for. We'll go ahead and push this piston back in there, and then we can throw those new pads in. Don't forget to pump up that brake. You don't want to try to pull this thing off the lift, go to hold that front brake and have it not be pumped up once again. Ask me how I know. All right, baby. This Suzuki Savage is ready to go bring another person into the wonderful world of motorcycles. Feels pretty good. And back to the Yamaha. So I've got a few different parts to try out on the YZ465 today. I've got a new tank. Well, it's not a new tank, it's an old tank, but uh, the tank that I actually want to use, I think. I've got a new front end and I've got a couple of seats that probably not gonna use, but I've just kind of got them for mock-up purposes. I need to see what kind of seat is gonna fit on this. And when I finally do get a seat, it's gonna be something a lot nicer. I thought about maybe getting a Saddleman tracker unit. And if I don't get that, I'll probably get a custom made seat. For the meantime, for mock-up purposes, Buddy Bezos to the rescue. Oh, on Amazon, I actually got a couple of different length seats, literally like 25 bucks a piece. Again, these are just for mock-up. Uh, if I don't mess them up, I'll probably just send them back. At the end of the day, I don't want to use something like this because it is really cheaply made. I'd rather have something that was made locally or some by, made by somebody who actually cares about what they're doing. But this is good for Maka. Now, I wouldn't want to sit on it. That's for sure. But at least we can see what things look like. For the tank, I've got this old Honda CL unit. The thing about this bike that's a little different when you're trying to source a tank for it that is still got a vintage look. It's got kind of that flat look. It's not quite as sporty as I wanted it to be, but your options are limited because you need a right-hand side pet cock. So if you don't have this on the right-hand side, you're either gonna have to fab one up, drill it and weld it in place, which is certainly possible. Or you gotta find a tank that already has one. And that's because of that big expansion expansion chamber on the left hand side. Can't really run a petcock when the pipe's taking up all the room there. So let's just go ahead and throw some of this stuff on here, kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. 
Again, this is really just mock-up. You know, this is uh, just getting an idea of what we're going to look like. Obviously, since we have a longer tank that would have been on their stock, the stock tank would have stopped right around here. We're going to have to extend this seat back, that's for sure. Oh, and Brian, obviously, oh, I don't want this gap here, so whatever seat we make will, you know, the seat pan will have to come down this far in order to look good. The tank will have to be up this high on account of the shock. Right about there, I mean, this isn't going to work, is about what I'm looking for. It's definitely going to be a taller seat, but I might only be 5'12 and a half, but I got long legs, so I actually like a seat that sits up high, personally. And I really like with bikes like this, I just like that seat that kind of just goes right in line with the tank where you've got one flat plane. And that's how old scramblers, old dirt bikers, and flat trackers were kind of set up. It just allowed you to move around the bike a lot better and position your body weight. So that's why you buy stuff like this, like this crappy seat from my man, Buddy Bezos, so you can get an idea of what you want the bike to look like. Now, I did get two different seats because I wasn't sure on the length, although after putting this one on there, I'm pretty sure I do want a longer seat. I like the way it looks when it comes back like that. I got a shorter one too, um, just so I could kind of go back and forth and look at them on there and see what I thought. And Well, the short one is definitely definitely gonna be sportier. I think my mind's already made up. This is definitely like a kind of a sportier look if you were to use something short like that. But I really think, uh, I personally like the longer seats. You know, a lot of guys love that little kind of cafe look, you know, with the stubby little seat. I mean, I was even thinking about going to a saddle and tracker, but the saddle and trackers are, I gotta see how long they are. If they come out this far with the tail section, I'd definitely run one, but I really think that this seat, having a longer seat like that, I think that's gonna be the look. Yeah, I think I like that. That looks way better. Okie dokie, time for the next piece of the puzzle, which is the front end. Not that there's anything terribly wrong with the front end that's on it now. It's not like I'm trying to like go, like do some kind of insane race on this or taking off any sweet jumps. Like this is not going to be a motocross bike. It was originally a motocross bike, but I'm not building a motocross bike. I'm building a street bike. So I get to get a WR250 front end for it. The street version of the WR250, because I know that there's a lot of supermoto options available for it. I'm hoping I can get some good brakes. I know back in the day, you used to be able to get an adapter kit that would allow you to run big Brembo brakes, which is what I want to do. It's not going to be a super moto. I'm not going to have 17 inch wheels. I don't like them. I'm thinking I'm going to do 19 inch in the front and 19 inch in the back tracker style, but I still want that inverted front end and the WR250, you know, it was a street bike. You know, it was sold as a street legal bike. So I'm hoping that the options I have for that front end are just a little bit better. And the price was right, okay? It was it was only like 150 bucks and it came with a wheel and a tire. So let's see if we can fit that thing on there. Trust me, it definitely needs to be rebuilt, but I would have I would have had it rebuilt and sprung for my weight anyway. I ain't exactly a ballerina over here. And when it comes to dirt bike suspension, they ain't set up for your boy weighing at 300 pounds, okay? I get suspension work done on every bike I own and it's worth every penny. Let's see what we can make happen here. If I'm gonna mock this up, the front end's gotta come off. Since I am updating this to be a little more modern, I could, it came with drum brakes, which drum brakes can be cool, especially little mini drums like this, but I really, I wanna upgrade to juice brakes on. I want nice brakes on this thing. The whole thing is, is this is a YZ465, man. This thing's gonna be a ripper. I wanna be able to stop good too. I really wanna be able to save this mini drum because I actually think they look really cool on choppers sometimes. But once again, just every freaking every nut on this thing has seen better days. Oh, that's what you get when you're dealing with an old dirt bike. Seeing years of use and years of maintenance is, man, these fasteners just really get, really get ate up. I know I'm being like unnecessarily careful with something I'm not gonna use, but I might wanna use it later. Like I said, I think these mini drums actually look really cool. I'm just not gonna use it on this bike. Even though this looks all crappy now, this is all aluminum. So just a little bit of elbow grease and this whole thing could be shining bright. Let's see if we can go ahead and pull this wheel off now. Once again, <laughs> wish me luck because these fasteners have seen better days. I would say that this wheel has been off quite a few times and not carefully. Well, let's uh, go ahead and be really careful and uh, hopefully I can get it off. Oh, I mean, one way or another, it's coming off. I'm just hoping I'm gonna get it off without a fuss. There we go. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got this, uh, got this clamp loose anyway. I've also got to be careful because if my WR250 front end doesn't work, I'm gonna have to stick this thing back on here to keep it a roller. Everything's just been used and abused so many times that like half the nuts and bolts on this thing are like in between sizes. Come on. 
There we go, that came out. Very cool, I'm a little worried about that one. There we go, and we got an axle. And we got a front wheel off. All right, cool. Best place to keep hardware is back where it came from. Even though this front end has seen better days, could be rebuilt, you know? I don't really know what I'd ever use it on because I think it's a really ugly front end. Like, it's a it's an old dirt bike. They didn't exactly make old dirt bikes to look good. Yeah, I think it looks pretty terrible, but ah, you never know, man. Someone might need it, someone might want it, so I'll keep all the parts with it and uh, just put it in the old storage unit. Although something tells me you could probably replace this front fender pretty easily. Although it does have a, it has that battle scar there. It does got a little, it's got a little bit of character. So who knows, man? I'm a, I suck at throwing things away. So I'll probably just keep this. All right, let's see how easy these forks come out. It is kind of neat to see these old school forks still had uh, two mounting bolts on them because this was supposed to be a motocross bike, so it was supposed to go off-road, as opposed to like a 39 millimeter Harley Davidson front end, which they were using up until like 2006 or something like that, that only had one single mounting point on the on the pinch clamp. It's just neat to see that they did build this thing to, to shred. Like this was a motocross bike and it was supposed to go fast. There we go. Someone took some care to tighten those suckers up, that's for sure. Out of all the hardware on this thing, the mounting bolts for, uh, for the forks actually seem to be in much better shape than everything else. Many years of crud on this thing, so I'm not blaming it for being a little, a little shy about coming out. Come on now. Oh, well, you know, sometimes when they're feeling shy, they just need a little bit of persuasion. Oh, I don't even want to come out of there at all, does it? I don't want to hit the top. Yep, they're, they're air forks. They are air adjustable, so I definitely don't want to smash that up getting these things out. I guess I could just throw a little PB blaster on it. Just wait a minute. Nothing wrong with doing things the right way and saving this stuff instead of messing it up. Go ahead and hit this one while we're at it. Let that one soak for a little bit too. All right, we gave that a little time to sit. Let's see if they're any more willing to come out. Oh yeah, they're coming out a whole lot easier now. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Freaking PB blaster did the trick. Yeah, that comes out a lot easier with that blaster on there. Until we get to the part that I didn't put PB blaster on. Yeah. Come on. Get out of your hole. All right, one lunch break later. Let's get back to business. Mm, this throttle was made in Sweden. Always weird, I guess, nowadays to think about anything small like that being made literally anywhere except China or Taiwan. I guess back in the day, they made them all over the place, not just there. Also, I wonder if it's an aftermarket part because even in the in the 70s, Japanese bikes were still considered uh, what you would call cheap, like the cheaper option. I guess they're still cheaper now, somewhat, but you know, they're also synonymous with quality now. Whereas back then, Japanese bikes were just made Maybe, maybe in the 80s starting to change, but pretty much considered cheaply made. Like a nice, cheaply made bike that you can get, so you wouldn't expect to see nice parts on it. The fact that the throttle is made in Sweden and not in Japan is kind of stands out. I wonder if it's like a, an aftermarket part that somebody put on it back in the day to make it better for racing. Mm -hmm. Well, whatever it is, it's had some uh, dodgy repairs over the years, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it just because, who knows, man? You never know when uh, this old stuff is like really hard to find or really rare. Again, seeing as the uh, body's all made out of aluminum, you can absolutely polish this thing up. So who knows, man? Maybe, uh, Maybe I will end up using it since it's got an aluminum body and could really easily make it pretty nice. Well, we well, tried to do this the nice way, but I don't care about you that much, so you're just coming off. One kind of neat thing that I had not seen on one of these bikes before, and I'm, now I'm not sure if somebody did it because the kill switch was broken or if this was like a racing safety precaution back in the day, but it has this tied to the spark plug boot, which is then tied to the handlebars. I always wondered if you then, this was just the kill switch by pulling that off, or if when you were racing, this is something you tied to yourself as the rider, and if you came off the bike and the bike flew away, then, then that would kill it, so you wouldn't have a runaway bike. I really don't know, so maybe someone down there who knows more about vintage racing than me can tell me what that is, because it doesn't look stock.
Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just don't know. It looks like it could be some sort of old school racing thing that they maybe they used to require this back in the day on motor motocross. Like I don't know, man. Either that or it's just a ghetto kill switch. Get rid of my tank here because uh, even though it does need some cleaning up, obviously needs a paint job among other things. I don't want to put any dents in it. It's pretty straight right now. Some minor little crease right there, but I ain't nothing. A little, a little bondo can't fix. All right. How hard are you going to find me here? Oh, actually, not at all. I mean, there's no reason that should have been under a crazy amount of torque because it's got the pinch bolt here too. And this top triple tree should just pop off and the bottom should fall out. You know, someone in the comments, because I was complaining about how disgusting this bike is, just because years of dirt and grime, someone said, why don't you take it to car wash and just like pressure wash it off before you start working on it? And I was like, damn, that, that would have been a really good idea. That's smart. <laughs> all right. Cool. Not gonna fight me at all. Damn, dude. Color me surprised. Either there's so much grease and grime built up from over the years, or you know, this bike was actually, for uh, some portion of its life, properly maintained. The bearings still got grease on them. They don't look rusty or dry. Nice. So I'm gonna show you guys why I chose specifically a WR250 front end. I've already gone into a couple of the reasons I picked it, but there's more than one. Now with YZ465s, there's not a whole lot of customization knowledge out there. So I'm kind of flying blind here and it's not like other bikes. Usually, you know, when you try to customize something, let's say it's like an XS650, something that's very commonly customized. You got a lot of info out there. A lot of people kind of get you past certain hurdles. They've already, run into the same problems that you're likely to run into. Fine blind on this thing because it's a very uncommon bike to customize. Most people who put these things back together and restore them, restore them back to factory and they race them. So one of the reasons uh, I picked a WR250, which was a street front end and an early one too, is Japan has, uh, they have this kind of habit where they take all their stuff from their older bikes and they filter it down to their dual sport bikes. Whereas the YZ250, 250 or the uh, the motocross 250 that they make or 450 they make where that gets upgraded all the time for racing they kind of just take old parts for their dual sports and they just slap them on there so i'm hoping that you know enough of this hasn't changed because japan does not like to pay for new engineering if they don't have to this really common misconception about japan that that everything's just engineered to the max well some things are they certainly have very very talented engineers but if they can just use an old design Design, they'll use it forever. I mean, they don't want to spend that money. So they will use old stuff and old designs and just pull that file of something that got engineered in the 1970s and use it again and again and again and again. Just very common in Japan and especially on Japanese motorcycles. So the front ends of this one and the WR front end looked really, really similar in the way that they're shaped. Obviously that one's much bigger because it's upside down forks, but I've got my fingers crossed that Yamaha wanted to pinch a couple pennies and they didn't really change that design too much. You can see on everything on here, this basically just looks almost identical to that. This really just looks like a beefed up version of what this is. Now, if this was a motocross bike, their motocross team, they spend money on that. Those things get designed every few years, but their dual sports, they don't really spend any engineering money on those. They kind of just end up leaving them the same. So I'm hoping that in the neck, this won't be a big deal. It even looks like the fork stops will even still work. The fork stops are identical on these two units. Here's the hoping. Let's cross our fingers and find out. Let's go ahead and get this sucker taken apart too, which is also seen better days, but uh, not as many bad days as the front end I just took off. I'll probably replace all this hardware though. It looks pretty rough. Once more with the breaker bar. There we go. The old persuader out. Let's see if we can persuade this axle out of here. Oh yeah, look at all the dirt coming out of that thing. Yeah, that's dry as a bone. Let's see if we can get these tubes loose and fit this thing up there. Let's see, gonna be so a bitch, it's gonna bite me. That's gonna bite me. Put a PB blaster on this guy too. There we go. All right. How about you? You gonna be a son of a bitch too? Let's find out. Oh, wait, man. A lot easier to pull out when it's attached to a bike, you know? 
Let's see how much modification this is gonna take. Hopefully not much. Hopefully not any. Well, you know, not any. We're asking for a lot there. Let's just go ahead and hope for not much. They look the same size, but let's see. Oh no, no, these are smaller. Moving around in there. In the race, definitely not the correct size. And the ID of this one is definitely not the correct size either. We're definitely gonna need new bearings, but if we get the correct outer ID and the correct inner ID, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's just go ahead and put it in without bearings for right now, and we'll see what we're working with. It looks like it's gonna be a little long. It's all right though, there's a couple of ways around this, depending on how hard I wanna work to make these fit. I don't really pay a whole lot for these, so. I don't know how, how hard I'm willing to make these fit. Yeah, we're much too long on this neck. Now since these still work down here, I think it's going to be easier to take this top part down than it is to take this bottom part up. Or just take, weld a new piece on this top part that brings it up a little bit so this net can sit up there. But as it sits right now, definitely not a direct bolt-on fit. Alright, let's do a little thinking. Okay. Progress. I've been having to use the old noodle, not exactly my favorite thing to do, and it's hurting other people too. And especially all the fleas up here, they're all getting hot feet because that sucker's working overtime. But we've come up with maybe a solution. You see what I found out, as I said earlier, is this neck for this triple tree is just too long. Now, what I found out is it really just makes a lot more sense to press the neck out of the old triple tree. So I'm gonna press this neck out because the IDs in here on this one and the bottom one are the same. So I can press this neck into this triple tree. Now, the top ODs aren't quite the same, which I'm just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to figure out, but I think that the solution is just to make a sleeve for it. If I can make a sleeve that fits in there, it's exactly one millimeter. So if I can make that sleeve, I think we'll be just fine. And uh, you know, no welding, we'll see. Fingers crossed, let's head up to the ride factory and see if we can't press this in. 1-800-ASK-SHELBY, doing our usual bit and we're going to the ride factory to save us. I had contemplated a lot of different things. I thought at first I was gonna cut a section of this out and have it welded back together. Just like, I was thinking all this crazy different stuff, I thought about welding a new piece on the, the actual neck on the bike to make it taller but hey baby let's cut through the gordian knot and put this one on this one as always why drive when you can ride baby if i can if i can get out of my stupid freaking driveway Is my box gonna fit not a chance. Dude, the Trail 125 putting in work, baby. This is just the parts hauler for the for the custom YZ, which is as of yet unnamed. Going to get parts and going to get parts modified actually is just so much more fun when you get to ride there. I'm gonna talk about bang for your buck. Not only do I use it all the time, but it's just the level of enjoyment when I am using it. That's what I that's what I really like. The dollar amount per like smile, miles per smile is just so freaking an eye on this thing that i mean come on dude if you finance this thing it's literally like less than eating fast food once a week is your payment and the amount of enjoyment i get out of this every day i ride it and i usually ride it like oh my gosh probably like four or five times a week just running errands the amount of enjoyment that i get out of this motorcycle way better than eating burger king for two once a week i always think about it like that because you just go like oh you know what is the payment on that thing like oh i don't know like 80 bucks a month or something like that even if, if you're gonna pay it off fast because they're so cheap and you're like that's literally like you and your old lady getting burger king once a week that's what that is and maybe not even that much i mean goddamn, dude i think like burger king for two people is probably over 20 bucks with a drink give me a break here trust me i might be a fat boy over here but i weigh more enjoy spending money on motorcycles than I do enjoy spending money on fast food. Well, let's see if this is even possible. I mean, uh, the IDs <laughs> on the on the two bottom lower triple trees, the IDs for the steering stem looked the same, and I measured them the same, but my measurements were not exactly gonna call them uh, exact science here. All right, guys, you can tell the uh, garage is put back together and all my tools are put up because I went to the water ride factory and I knew they wouldn't have time to do it. It was right at the end of the day and I'm not about to make, make the boys of the ride factory start working on my stuff when they're getting ready to go home. Even though if I had asked pretty please, they probably would have. So that's gonna about do it for this episode. Uh, it's time to put down the wrenches and stop working on bikes and start riding bikes and drinking beer with my friends. Every once in a while, you gotta do that. It's gotta be a healthy balance. I mean, I guess it's kind of unhealthy, but 
It's a balance regardless. Don't forget, if you want to grab a Costome Way sticker, the link to Alex's store is down below. There's only 150 of them. They're going to be gone fast. So if you want one, jump on it now. One in 150, that ain't bad, baby. That's going to about do it for this one. We'll be jumping back on the YZ465 build as soon as I have that triple tree back. Motor should be at Booty Che Moto right now uh, up in Pacific, Washington. Not there. Should be there soon. We're trucking right along on this. Got some polishing to do. Got some uh, cleaning up to do. Got to make a seat loop, but I think this build's going to come together fast, which feels good seeing as my, my dual sportster, the dirtster, old dirty bastard, that build took, I mean, not that long. I think I thought it took like four or five months to build that thing. The one before that was the XS650 chopper, which took me almost two years to build. So I'm slowly getting faster. It's a, it's a learning computer. <laughs> one day, one day, maybe I'll be more than a hobbyist and I can graduate to amateur. Maybe. Don't hold your breath. Anyway, till next time, y'all. Keep it weird.